Hello everyone and welcome back to my introduction to C series. So today we're actually going to tackle functions and we're going to start right now. So last time we left off with this program here, I'm actually gonna delete all this so that we start off with just an empty main function. And if you recall, main itself is a function, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But what exactly is a function? Let's start there. So a function in C or any other language is also sometimes known as a subroutine or a method. All these terms are interchangeable. A function is basically a way for us to gather bits of code into logical chunks to be called or reused in more than one place. So as a practical example of this, let's say for example, we wanted to add two numbers, right? So we can say int a equals six, int b equals four, right? And then int result equals a plus b. And then we'll do a printf the result is, and then we'll have a percent i backslash n, and then we'll use pass result there. Okay, and so let's go ahead and clear this and make main and run it, and we'll see the result is 10. Great, right? But there's a problem with this, right? And this code is on our main sort of section here. And what if what if we wanted to sort of perform this operation again with a couple of numbers? Well, we'd have to redefine all of these things, right? Or declare a new set of variables, pass them around, whatever. And this, this just isn't really a clean way of doing things. And so what we might do is add a new function to our code uh, that maybe is called add numbers that takes in um, a couple of things and actually performs this addition result and then gives it back to us, right? And so you can think of a, a function almost as a, a mini program, right? Where it takes some sort of input maybe and provides some sort of output. And the input that it takes or the output that it that it responds with can vary um, from function to function. We'll get into some examples of that in a bit. Let's try an example first off of just printing something, right? So I'm gonna go here above my int main and I'm gonna create a new function, and I'm gonna type void for now, and I'll get back to that in just a second. And I'm just going to type write text, okay? And in parentheses, I'm gonna put void, and open parentheses, close parentheses, okay? And this is what a function looks like, okay? And basically what this is saying is, we have what is called a return type, which is basically the uh, the type of data that's going to be returned or is the result of the function. And in this case, we're saying void because we don't actually want to, we don't care about the output of this function um, after we call it. And that'll make more sense here in a minute. And then we have the name of the function, which is write underscore text. And then in between these parentheses, we actually have the inputs. Now in this case, I've typed void as this function doesn't take any inputs. It's basically going to just write something to the screen and that's it. We then have an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. Okay, and so in this function, for example, we want to do one thing. We wanna say printf. And we're actually literally going to put text, backslash n, right? So it's literally going to write text to the screen. And then to call this, we're actually gonna type in our main function, write text. And then empty parentheses, open close parentheses, and a semicolon. And so what we've done here is we've defined a function called write text. In that function's body, we have issued a statement to say print this text with a with a new line at the end of it. And we're actually doing what's known as calling that function from main here by saying write text, which is the name of the function, open close parentheses, and then a semicolon. So if we build this and run, now we'll see we get text as well as the result is 10. 
And so we know that our function has actually been called. We know this works, right? And the cool thing about functions is if we wanted to do this a couple of times, we could actually just call it multiple times and it'll actually get re-executed every single time we call it. But we're not gonna do that here. One thing that I've touched on on occasion is code cleanliness. And typically the way you wanna organize your code is you typically would want your main function towards the top because that's where your actual application starts. And it just makes it a little bit easier for anybody else to read um, when they actually start looking at your code and, and trying to read and figure out what's going on. And that somebody might be you in six months, so bear that in mind too. What we really should do is all of our custom code or, or logic or functions should really come after main. And so I'm actually gonna cut this from here and I'm gonna move it after main, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and save that real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and build and uh-oh, we have errors. So if you recall, I mentioned when we first set this up that if we see errors at all, that you would definitely know it if, if something went wrong during the compilation process. This is an example of that. So what we've introduced here is an error in our code. And there's all this sort of nebulous stuff on the screen complaining about implicit function declarations and write text and all this stuff, right? So what does all this mean? I wanna take this time to point out that you're going to hit this a lot in C. And don't worry about it. Usually these things can be Googled and you can figure out quite easily what the solution to the problem is. And you can actually typically read this and, and sort of parse it and try and figure out exactly what's going on. If we read this top to bottom, this says implicit declaration of function write text. It gives us here a line number, which is 10, and an example of the, um, the text. And if we look here, there's actually a little arrow pointing to the problematic section of code, right? And so if we look at our code over here, it's line 10, we have indeed write text. So it's saying this is where the problem is. And then it says at top level, it says warning conflicting types for write text, void write text void. Okay, and if we look here, we have 17, which is line 17. And it says void write text void. And again, we have a point uh, or an arrow pointing to the problematic code, which is this guy. And it says, note previous implicit declaration of write text was here. And so that's here. So what does this mean? What is this trying to tell us? Well, C's compiler is not all that bright as it turns out, because it is quite old and it's always it's worked the same way since it was originally introduced. So it's not quite smart enough to always figure things out on its own. And a perfect example of this is we have called this write text function, but the compiler doesn't actually know about it until we get here. So when the compiler actually processes this file, it does so from top to bottom. And so this void write text does not actually exist as far as it knows when it gets to this point because it actually hasn't parsed this part of the file yet. So it's saying, hey, I don't know what right text is. I have no idea. And so how do we get around this, right? Because I mentioned before for code cleanliness, we don't wanna put it above our int main, right? So what do we do about this? Well, this is one of the few times where I'll say that copy pasta is, is kind of okay in code. Um, I try to avoid it for many reasons that you'll see on other series that I have. But in this case, what we're actually gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to copy uh, this first line of code with the exception of this curly brace here, right? So we're gonna go on and copy this, this whole thing. And we're gonna to wanna to go up here to above our int main and paste it and put a semicolon at the end. So what this is doing is this is declaring that there is a function which returns type void called write text, which takes in uh, nothing as its input, right? So it's saying, it's telling the compiler, hey, we have this function that's coming. It's not been defined yet, but this is what it looks like. And so that is enough for this to be able to work at this point because the compiler can, can look at this and say, oh, hey, write text. Okay, the code has told us that this is coming, so I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Um, so we, we know that whenever it shows up, that's what we wanna use, right? And then down here is our actual definition, right? So we have declaration, definition. And so as long as our declaration comes before its use, we're fine, right? We don't have to actually define it um, before it's used. We just have to declare it before it's used, okay? So if we save this and 
we make main again, note that this time we get no errors. And so when we run, it runs as expected. And so if you ever see um, this error, that is what that is bleating about. So obviously this write text doesn't really do anything interesting, right? Um, and we've mentioned that it has input and output. So let's actually jump into some examples of that, right? So I'm actually going to get rid of this write text void because we don't need it. And I'm gonna remove it from here. And I'm gonna create a new function and it's return type or result type is gonna be an integer, right? So I'm gonna start this off with int instead of void like I had before. And I'm gonna call this add numbers, okay? And that's gonna be the name of the function and then open parenthesis, it's going to take uh, two numbers, right? And so to define this, instead of typing void like I had here before, we're actually gonna type int for an integer. And I'm just gonna call this a, right, integer a. So that's gonna be the first value that it's gonna take. And then in C, whenever you're declaring a list of parameters or arguments, which is what these inputs to the function are called, we separate them with a comma, right? So we say uh, the first input or the first parameter as it's called is uh, an integer called a. The second is gonna be an integer called b. And then we're gonna close the parenthesis, open curly brace, close curly brace. Okay, and so this is basically saying this function add numbers is going to take in an integer called a, an integer called b, and return another integer, okay? What we're gonna do in here is just to sort of be explicit about this is we're gonna say, we're gonna create an integer called result, and we're gonna set that to a plus b, okay? So we have a our add operation here that's being assigned to result, and then we're going to return result, okay? And so um, this, whatever is returned in this statement, the type of it must match the return type of the function, okay? So since we have an int result, we are returning result, it's an int here, we're all good. So as before, we'll need to take a copy of this and declare it up here at the top, okay? And then from here, we can say that int result equals, and I'm gonna paste in add numbers here, and then change this to say a comma b and close the parenthesis, okay? And actually, well, yeah, let's go ahead and run this, right? And I'm actually gonna change up these numbers just to sort of illustrate that this works, right? So we'll change this to five and three, okay? And let's go ahead and make and run. And now we see that the result is eight. So our function is being called properly. It's returning the value that we expect. Everything works as expected. Now, another thing that you can do is as you saw me allude to in our, our first video um, where we used printf is you can actually pass these directly, right? So you don't have to say, um, you don't have to actually declare and, and assign these values here. You could actually just pass five and three like that and eliminate these two lines, right? And so if we do that, you see it still runs, okay? And so, printf by extension is really nothing but another function similar to this one that we've created that has the logic inside of it to do all the things that we've described so far, right? So it takes in a, um, a what's known as a string, which is basically a, a bunch of text in between these double quotes. And we'll get into strings a little bit further down the series, but it takes in a string of text and then potentially a set of values to use with these replace tokens, right? So this is a very special type of function uh, that exists that handles us for us. So the last point that I wanna to touch on with functions is we have our int main here. And our int main function uh, takes in void, meaning it takes no parameters in, but it returns integer. Why is that, right? And we'll note here that we're returning zero. Well, when the operating system calls main, it's expecting what's known as a return code. And this return code is basically telling the operating system whether or not the program was successful in doing whatever it was designed to do. Operating systems are programmed to look for a return code of zero for a success. 
So as far as programs are, are concerned, whenever you return zero, that means the program executed and closed down successfully and it ran as it was designed. If you return anything that's not zero, whether it be positive or negative, that would indicate an error. So we'll say if result is not equal to nine, because this is gonna return eight, then what we can actually do is we can actually do something called returning early, um, and we can say return one. And this is basically going to tell us that, uh, it's gonna tell the operating system that there was a problem with the application when it actually ran, right? So um, we can use branching in our logic to actually handle this for us and, and return out of the application gracefully, um, but indicate to you know maybe some automated tests or something um, that things didn't go as planned. And we'll actually go ahead and print a message here saying um, result was not nine. Okay, we'll go ahead and make and run. And we'll see here that we got our result was not nine, right? So you'll notice that this did not print out down here because when we returned, that is actually saying literally return out of this function now, kick out, we don't wanna execute anything else. And so that's another important thing to, be to bear in mind with functions is whenever you call return, it's saying immediately exit this function. We don't want to actually execute anything else. And uh, if the function actually returns a type of any kind, you'll need to provide a type there. Uh, if it does not return a type, then you would simply call return. So for example, if you had a void function, um, we'll go back to our print uh, text example. So if we do printf text, right, and just return, um, then if we were to do a second call to print text down here, this would not actually be called. So to prove this, I'm actually going to paste a declaration up here and call print text first. And I'm actually going to remove this add numbers because we don't need it. Okay, let's get rid of that. All right, and we'll build, oops, you know what? I forgot to remove this, remove that too. So now we just have our print text function here. So we're just gonna call that. And what we're expecting to see is that this gets called, but this does not get called. All right, so we make and we call and we run and we see that we only have text. So this is something that we eventually will want to avoid is having anything that re that runs after a return statement. We're actually gonna put something in place to actually block that from happening in the future, but it is something that I wanted to point out in terms of application flow. So that's all there is when it comes to functions, at least for now. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and I will see you guys in the next video.